This episode of Cello Chat is brought to you by Carriage House Violins of Johnson String Instrument. Please visit us at www.carriagehouseviolins.com. All right, and we're live. I'm going to kick it off to you. Oh, okay. Hi, um, my name is Hai Yen Yi, and I'm the principal cellist of the Philadelphia Orchestra. And um, I joined the orchestra in 2006. And this is my 16th, 17th year with the orchestra. Um, and I was also associate principal uh, cellist of the New York Philharmonic uh, uh, from 1999 to 2006. So um, I'm going to just talk about a um, little bit about the audition, because many people are interested in taking auditions and what it's like to play for an audition. And um, it's probably, from my own experience, it's probably one of the most nerve wracking experience I've had. Um, I remember my first audition uh, in 1999 for the New York Philharmonic. I was really, really nervous. And, um, and I had done competitions before, but it wasn't anything like doing competitions, um, you know, and um, so also that brings me to a point that taking orchestra audition is very different from, you know, doing a competition or playing a recital because it's a music that specifically for playing in an orchestra. Um, so um, actually, um, so when there's an audition, right, it's usually about three or four rounds. Um, and the first round, Philadelphia Orchestra actually asked for a movement from a standard concerto, like a romantic concerto, um, and uh, just the first movement without cadenza. Uh, and then there's a list of excerpts that um, uh, that they give you before the audition to prepare. And so they will choose probably three out of the maybe, let's say, eight excerpts uh, uh, to play that they, 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 they will pick for you to play. And the first round is very short. It's about five to seven minutes um, because there are a lot of people uh, playing. And then um, and soon after, you know, after that day, they will tell you whether you're getting to the next round or not. And then usually the second round is probably two or three days after. Um, so that involves maybe one more time of the concerto and then three other different excerpts from, uh, from, uh, from the list. And then for the final, uh, usually the conductor is there. And for Philly Orchestra, actually, there are two final rounds, the first in the morning um, and then another one right after lunch. Um, so and that could be behind the screen or um or with the screen open and um so um and then the um the list of the repertoire usually are uh the beethoven symphony number no. five second movement the slow movement uh goes like this uh, <laughs> that the, oftentimes the, the dotted rhythm, uh, some people play it not correctly. Like uh, there is a 16th instead of a 32nd dotted. Uh, this note is actually a 16th, not a 32nd. So, um, and um, also be careful that it doesn't sound like a triplet. Uh, it's, it's, 
you know, it's a, it's a, a little bit later, the 32nd note. Uh, shouldn't shouldn't be like that would be too much like a, like a triplet. Um, so usually this uh, this excerpt plus the the variations uh, that come to uh, this one and then plus the thirty second one. Uh, let's see. It's, it's, uh, that one, that one also is uh, in the excerpt. And sometimes the third movement is also uh, pre uh, asked for the uh, in the scherzo. This one is also asked. Um, and then it's the Mozart Symphony number no. thirty-five. Um, some, you know, sometimes people like to ask to hear the classical symphonies, um, and it's the thirty-five. It's the 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 last movement. This is the Hafner uh, symphony. Let's see. That that that's the that's the one. <clears throat> Um, that, that's the one, and um, then also num uh, symphony number forty and forty one. Sometimes people also ask for those two symphonies, um, and then it's the Mendelssohn uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, the scherzo, the second one. Um, the second one is more difficult than the first one so people usually just ask for the second one from uh, from n <laughs> this one this one and uh so so um the trick for this is to play uh, don't play too fast, but with the, uh, the people are looking for a good spiccato. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Just, you know, think of steady, very steady, uh, uh, play, practice with a metronome. Important to practice the excerpt with a metronome. Uh, so, and... Um, so... Yeah, the accents is also uh, important, right? So then after this one is, um, let's see, Tchaikovsky, uh, Tchaikovsky Fourth Symphony, very famous Fourth Symphony, second movement, uh, the slow movement. Um, Sorry, uh, the, this one. Uh, Also, and see how you can play beautifully this on the D string. Um, a lot of times, people that on the D play on the on the D string, and then sometimes also um, the Sixth Symphony, the Pathetic, is is asked for the slow movement. That 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 one. Um, so 
Then it's the Brahms. Uh, Brahms Second Symphony, the slow movement. Uh, this one. And um, the, the important thing about this one is that to keep a long, very long line. Uh, and Brahms always write the melodies in very, very long line. And um, then sometimes also the Haydn variation, Brahms Haydn variations, the, 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 the very uh, quick one is, is asked for, for the, uh, the spiccato. And um, then we go to uh, Debussy La Mer. Um, that that is actually a, a cello um, tutti ensemble. There are three or four voices, and uh, so um, but it's always the top line that's asked for the audition, and um, so. Of, um, and and then it's the Strauss selections, uh, Strauss Dong Juan. Um, that one I find you just really have to practice a lot, um, and uh, just have to be able to play it. Uh, it's it's actually a really great piece. It's like the perfect length. For, for Strauss, um, not too long, not too short, and um, so so the just the beginning uh, that one. Um, I usually start here with that fingering, and um, then there's the Heldenleben, which is very difficult. Um, uh, it's difficult because of a lot of the the shifting and uh, and stuff. It's usually the first two pages um, of this, and maybe somewhere in the middle there's some uh, difficult passages to play, and that's also asked for. And so, and then there's a, a Verdi Requiem Offertorio. Um, that's a very famous, famous excerpt. Um, and then, of course, for section players, sometimes you will hear the Smetna uh, Barter Bride Overture, which has a lot of fast notes. Uh, and um, uh, then the Beethoven Ninth Symphony, the recitative from the last movement, was uh, the Tutti Cello. And okay, and then there's some um, if for other um, principal uh, positions, uh, there are solos uh, that will be asked uh, to play, uh, such as the Brahms Second Piano Concerto, um, the third movement, the slow movement. Um, goes. Uh... <laughs> that not too slowly because it always tends to be slower and slower so sort of a sort of a moving tempo uh, from the beginning um, and, um, um, okay and then the another famous solo is the uh, Rossini William Tell uh, the That's also a very famous uh, one, and I've uh, uh, I've often played that, like uh, for a park concert in Central Park, 
uh, in New York when I was there, and um, um, and also at Man Center in Philadelphia, we play there in, in the summer uh, summer um, venue that we play. Um, has the famous that's the, that's the, um, the overture before the, the William Tell. Um, so um, there's also Shostakovich Symphony Number no. One solo in the last movement, um, Tchaikovsky Swan Lake, and Strauss Don Quixote, uh, and sometimes uh, also Shostakovich Symphony Number no. Fifteen. There's also a, a big solo in that that one. Um, so that's pretty much the standard repertoire for the excerpts and. Um, I would say that some of the tips that I have for uh, for the taking auditions is this uh, must listen to a recording beforehand uh, when you're practicing and um, just to make sure that you're, you're playing the right notes. A lot of times, you know, um, uh, you know, many of us are not experienced and taking a first audition, second audition and uh, Sometimes we play a wrong note, accidentals, or something like that. So, um, and um, it's also important to uh, play for somebody, you know, uh, like get a lesson, get a few lessons from people who know how these acts are supposed to go. And, um, uh, and so, um, and then I also find that uh, auditions is also you have to build some experience uh, from doing auditions and because they are very nerve-wracking and uh, very stressful um, basically you're just playing very short parts of uh, music uh, by yourself um, one to the next you know from one style to the next style and um, and take you should definitely take time between uh, the excerpts when you're on stage playing, and don't you know, don't rush through all of the say, I I I've got to play, I I got to play all these. Uh, really, take your time, take you know a few seconds between each excerpt, and um, and you have to almost like know it like you can memorize it, you know, play it by memory. Like you really have to just know it like like this, really really quickly. Um, we have a first question um, um, from Diana. She says, um, hello, nowadays, first stages of auditions are held via vi video recording. Any suggestions to do a proper video audition? This is in regards to the musical part. Oh, the video recording, yeah. Um, a video recording, um, it's probably just like um, w without any stop, right? You can't like stop and or cut or, or put it together i mean it's like a it's like a whole live thing um so i i would just do it a few times two or three three times to pick the right you know pick the best one to do it and play it like it, if it's like a, a a live audition you know um and uh, also doing trial record you know recordings yourself beforehand it's good like making a tape of your of myself when I have to play a, a piece in public um, that that's very helpful and it gives me confidence when I do that uh, you know and that that's important thank you you know thank and find a, yeah find a good recording engineer you know make sure your quality is good and not not with a lot of noise in the background or something like that good quality Great. Um, uh, Bruce asks, uh, do any panels ask the auditionees to play the storm section from Beethoven's Sixth Symphony? And how would one prepare? Oh, yeah, actually, that's usually, fortunately, never asked. Um, um, because, you know, I know what you're talking about. There's a... Usually, usually, a, it's a lot of faking, you know. Um, This is, uh, it's, uh, you know, people don't usually ask for that. And uh, 
and, and there's some some such a uh, uh, there's one part that is more audible. Maybe I will practice that part. Um, yeah, the rest of it is as much as you can uh, to get the notes, but not perfect. is is okay. Okay. And you earlier touched on some tips for uh, like, especially like first time auditioners. I was wondering, um, are there any uh, like pitfalls that would, if you did them in the audition, would get you immediately uh, eliminated? Yes. Um, I mean, I think a lot of uh, uh, students uh, still sort of, they think, oh, uh, taking a sub audition is uh, no big deal. And I'll just show up and, you know, sort of, sort of play, you know, um, I, I, nowadays it's like, you really have to prepare and it's the, the people who don't prepare that gets easily eliminated. You know, I would say the first round of, of auditions, uh, the, the judges are looking for people who can be easily, uh, uh, eliminated. And uh, so you don't want to give them a chance to, to do that. So um, you want to really kn know how the music is supposed to go, you know. All right, yeah, thank you. Um, did you wanna touch uh, up upon uh, life after the audition? So what happens after you win on it, win the audition? Yes, what yes, is, yes, I wanna... Right. Oh, oh actually, um, you know, uh, for the first time audition, um, uh, auditioners, um, you can purchase music from the Commerce uh, Music Company. I can find them online. And uh, because that's was very helpful when I took my first audition is that the, the library told me, oh, you can buy this uh, uh, cello part from this place. Uh, because, you know, um, because I didn't really have any uh, uh, music. So that's the most important one. And then also the, you know, the Leonard Rose orchestral excerpts books, they are very good. Like, the, especially the first and second volume, I found. Um, I think most of the repertoire that we play every day is in those two books, two, three books. So, um, and it, they have fingerings, you know, and I find uh, a lot of times the fingerings are very awkward to play and so it's, it's important to have some fingerings um, and so life after the the audition right it's um it's great you know the audition is over and uh, it's very very happy and you know uh, so um and uh so yeah and it's uh um let's see um it's usually um this very busy schedule like if you are in an orchestra like the New York Philharmonic, like Chicago Symphony, or like Philadelphia Orchestra, you know, um, LA Philharmonic, you know, uh, San Francisco Symphony, or Boston, and it's all very busy. And uh, we, we give um, uh, at least three concerts a week, uh, and um, at least three, sometimes four, you know, with a family concert on Saturday morning. Um, and uh, every week it's a different um, repertoire. So um, I, you just have to like, you know, have some experience. Uh, it would be great to have some experience in playing symphonies, orchestras, um, before going to a big orchestra like the Philadelphia or, or New York, you know, Chicago. Um, but if you don't, it's okay. And, and just, you have to be prepared to learn a lot of music. And it takes about 10 years probably to learn many of that music. Um, and um, nowadays, um, I, we have new music to play also, you know, new pieces that's written just for, just for us. And, and a lot of music we um, played like a, uh, we recently played the Florence Price symphonies, and uh, we and made very quickly made a recording like a couple of years ago, um, just uh, uh, you know, 
rehearse once, go through once, and then start recording. Uh, it was it was really really uh, fast, and um, also Philadelphia play a lot of Rachmaninoff symphonies. Like uh, they have the Rachmaninoff symphonic dances written for them, and uh, it's a really great piece. It's like a big symphony, and the second symphony also I think was written for them, and um, so we um, actually did a tour um, in October, November, playing a lot of these Rachmaninoff pieces. Um, and um, so, um, yeah, so, so a lot of music to learn. And it's best to actually, you know, look ahead a week or two before the week you're actually playing, uh, just to see what's what's coming up um, and I oftentimes listen to a recording even uh, you know with my part um, uh, just to hear how it goes and last week we played a Wild symphony number two which I never played and like apparently we played it something like 10 years ago and I have no idea like I couldn't even remember that I played it um, so um, like I had to listen to recording and, you know, fortunately I did because I was able to be prepared, you know, to play the first rehearsal. Uh, you have to be more or less prepared for the first rehearsal uh, you play because there's not much rehearsing. You know, usually it's only three rehearsals and the fourth one's a dress rehearsal. And then, um, so I like the schedule goes Tuesday, we have one rehearsal in the morning and Wednesday, usually double, Wednesday morning, afternoon. Afternoon is the soloist comes and just rehearse once with the soloist, whoever their solo, piano, violin, cello. And then um, the next day, Thursday morning is dress rehearsal. Sometimes it's an open rehearsal. And when I was in the New York Philharmonic, every Thursday morning was an open rehearsal, uh, which means there were audience in there. Um, and then Thursday evening, is already the first concert. So you only have two days to learn, you know, three pieces uh, for, for the first performance. Um, and then Friday afternoon, evening is a concert. Saturday is another concert. Um, and sometimes Sunday afternoon, there's a concert. Um, yeah, so it's, it, it's, it's quite busy, a lot of playing. Um, um, how much time would you estimate that uh, you spend preparing for uh, uh, practicing the all the orchestral repertoire that you need to cover? Yeah, um, actually, you know, I I don't have to spend that much time, which is a plus. It's a, I usually spend about forty five minutes looking at um, a piece of music, um, forty five minutes to an hour, one time. And it's not like practicing a concerto where you have to spend months <laughs> practicing a concerto. So, you know, in that way, it's much better uh, because the orchestra part, at least it's one part of a whole, uh, whole ensemble, whole thing. So, um, and there are other parts. So it's not like, you know, but, um, but it has a, a, a lot of tricky spots, you know, like rhythms and uh, also my main thing about playing orchestra is I found I've learned how to count. Uh, it's counting is really a big part of playing orchestra, um, probably because of it's cello, you know, um, but uh, sometimes it's just you have to learn how to count 15 measures, eight measures, you know, without losing the place. And um, um, especially, of course, if you're sitting in the front, you know, and um, because uh, it's kind of embarrassing, like I forgot how to come in and then other people are playing behind me. So, um, but unfortunately that doesn't happen too often, a few occasions, but not too often. Um, Do you have any tips for counting those 50 measure rests? <laughs> well, you either writing cues if there are, it's if it's possible to write cues like it's, it's violas who's sitting right right next to me and 
I'm sitting sort of uh, opposite the first violin in, in Philadelphia. It's the first violin, second violin, viola, cello, bass. So I, I'm, you know, whoever has a cue, violin, oh, enter here. Oh, you know, oboe, enter here. That kind of helps, you know. And uh, sometimes the conductor will give you a cue, which is great, you know, but you can't always count on that. You have to really know yourself when to come in. Um, anyway, so um, that's the thing. And uh, also for being a principal or any title chair, you have to do Boeings uh, on a sort of uh, almost every week. And so, you know, since we do a lot of new music, so I have to, I have to do a lot of the Boeings. Uh, and like the Florence Price symphonies, uh, we had to sort of redo the parts. There are a lot of wrong notes and the, the library have to change a lot of notes. And um, so uh, clefs are diff not right and stuff like that. Um, yeah, because we have to do a lot of uh, new music, a uh, lot of new, bo new Boeings. Also, you know, talk about divisies, what other divisies for people to play so they know when to play, what to play, and um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, um, I get to, um, I'm very privileged, privileged to play all this great music, uh, to, to be in such a wonderful orchestra, and and my previous also orchestra, the Philharmonic, is um, uh, where I learned most, you know, a lot of music by hearing all these great uh, musicians who play, you know, every day. And um, so it was really a great place to learn. Um, and um, so I remember some uh, very uh, great performances I, I did like uh, the Mendelssohn symphonies and Brahms, Beethoven with uh, former uh, music director of the Philharmonic, uh, Kurt Mazur. Um, and then also, uh, you know, the Mahler Five, a lot of, we also played a lot of Mahler symphonies, Mahler Five with um, Ivan Fischer. Um, he's a, he's a Hungarian uh, conductor. And in that same concert, Ling Hero played, uh, I heard Ling Hero play Beethoven Triple Concerto with uh, Anne so Sophie Mutter and Andre Previn. Uh, that was in 2004, 2004, 2005, a while ago. And um, we le recently did the German, uh, Brahms German Requiem um, with Yannick, uh, our music director of Philadelphia. Uh, Yannick Nezesegen, and um, that was really a great uh, experience, a very moving and uh, beautiful uh, piece. Um, and um, so being in an orchestra like, like this, uh, it's really uh, been wonderful for me, uh, both as a mu musician and uh, it help, has helped me to grow a lot as a musician. Uh, just by, you know, the richness of the repertoire and the, all this uh, different colors and, and language, different languages. Um, um, so, um, and uh, of course, we get to travel, uh, also the travel the world, uh, play music. And uh, we recently went to um, Europe, uh, played in uh, Luxembourg um, uh, in October, late October, and then went to Paris for two concerts at the Philharmonie Paris. Which it's a it's a, a new hall. It's a very a new hall, um, and, um, and played in Hamburg at the Elbe Philharmonie, which is a new hall. It looks like a kind of like a ship, um, uh, and then and then we also uh, went to uh, Baden Baden. Also, a lot of fun. Um, so, 
um, and, um, also just uh, from my experience playing with uh, uh, in an orchestra and uh, because my section is so wonderful uh, that there are 11 cellists, cellists uh, currently 10 and we are you know playing as a group um, it's a it's a different kind of a color than playing a solo um, or chamber music you know um, I love playing chamber music or, or solo uh, but because it's a whole section playing it's a really a very powerful uh, sound very very powerful sound pieces like Dvorak um, eighth symphony uh, like which opens uh, it's like a cello symphony it opens with a, a cello mel melody uh... <laughs> It's just really very powerful, very powerful, and um, so I really enjoy doing that. And um, so my my section is is wonderful. They are, they are all come uh, very prepared for the the rehearsals, um, so it's fun. And um, also, let's see. I, I find, uh, uh, you know, it's important um, to study the score uh, because, um, I mean, you can study the score. I mentioned listening to a recording and you can already look at a score when you're listening to a recording. And I find that to be um, actually both helpful and very interesting uh, because, you know, um, the cello line often don't have the most interesting part. Uh, in or orchestras, and uh, so by knowing what others people have, and it's very, uh, very uh, interesting. And uh, so every time I look at the after I look at the score, and I go to rehearsal, and I, you know, the conductor kind of looks at me like, hmm, you know what you what's going on, <laughs> and, and you know, I'm kind of like, oh yeah, I do know what's going on, you know. So that's kind of um, that's kind of fun. So it just helps the whole rehearsal um, come together a lot, lot faster. So um, and uh, then I, I I don't have any. Um, I think I'm 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 good. All right. Well, thank you so much for your wonderful playing and also your wonderful um, uh, words of wisdom. I have some questions that I that the audience uh, was was interested in asking. Um, so John asks, um, any tips on playing with piano, in particular the dynamic ba balance between the cello and piano? Yes, yes, uh, that's a very good question, important. Um, I, I would say that um, uh, you should always have, have someone listen for balance. That's always helpful, if possible, and um, uh, I mean, the piano is sort of a percussive instrument and the cello is, string instruments are very melodic. So I think there has to be some kind of uh, melting point, sort of, you know, come togetherness, you know, and maybe in the Beethoven sonatas, we can be a little more articulation, you know, um, maybe a little more like this. Uh, and and the piano can play more like a cello, you know, with their melodies. Uh, so um, I probably want to have the piano lit sort of in the middle, uh, lower, middle level, not the 
all the way up um, and probably sitting sort of on the other side of the piano, not sort of sitting right in the sound projecting uh, part, uh, sort of to the right of the pianist. You can try different that that place for um, balance. Um, building upon that question, sometimes uh, at the final rounds of orchestra auditions, they'll have uh, you play yes. with the piano and with very either very little rehearsal or no rehearsal. So how would you recommend uh, tackling that? Right. I mean, you should uh, probably rehearse. Um, we've all probably already played concerto with a pianist, you know, uh, before, if not with an orchestra before. Um, and um, so um, you should definitely, you know, rehearse it uh, once with a pianist friend. Uh, and then uh, when you get to the get to the audition, it really there's no time. I mean, at best, they run through it once. You know? um, and then you're sent to wait in the back, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, um, yeah. Okay, great. And I have another question from where, what? Um, question from a beginner. How not to raise the shoulder while playing on the A string? The left hand? Um, yes. I believe, um, I mean, if it's well, from a beginner, I would guess actually it's on the right hand. The right hand? Yeah, the shoulder on the right raise hand. The uh -huh. yeah. Well, I mean, we can actually uh, drop the shoulder most at the frog, right? So, uh, but as we go out to the tip, uh, the I, I wouldn't say I really raise the shoulder like this, but, but it should just be normal, however you open your arm, you know? Unless it's like the A string, it has a higher place, right? higher placement so you get you can go just put your bow down first see where your uh, arm is right and where where the arm is and then uh, see where your bow bow is here it's not this is right this is not right not normal. You can look yourself in the mirror, maybe, and see, you know. You can do a little small exercise uh, like this. Gradually go out in small bits, go out like this. string to feel more relaxed here great yeah um if anyone else has any uh questions please put them in the chat and i'll relay them um we're getting close to the end of our time but uh, I have a, another question for you. I noticed that a lot of orchestra musicians will also have numerous other side gigs. Like a lot of them will teach at an institution or form a cello ensemble or form a publishing company. Um, um, so I was wondering uh, how, because you also teach, right, at, at a university. Uh, so um, how do you- Actually, yeah, I actually, um... I don't have a a, a a teaching position, but I I have a few uh, private students that I enjoy. Yeah. So how do you balance the work of uh, like teaching and also the the normal uh, orchestra uh, work? Um, it it can be uh too busy sometimes. Um, uh, but. I, I enjoy teaching because it makes me think 
and um, and uh, um, also it, it, it kind of I kind of learn something as when I'm trying to explain something to to someone else, and um, um, so um, I just you know just at least teaching is like. It's nothing's emergency. Emergency. It's it's not like oh I have to perform you know in, in front of fifteen hundred people. Uh, and uh, so teaching is like oh I just be there at this time and then you know work. It's it's a it's a gradual process. Great. Yeah. And um, I was wondering. Sorry, uh, let me let me think about that for for one more second. Um, uh, how how has your practicing evolved over the years, um, or even recently? Um, and is there anything that has uh, surprised you? Right. Um, I um, I still enjoy practice a lot, um, and uh, I don't practice as much as I used to when I was, you know, a student, because I just don't have the time to do it. And we are, we are rehearsing and performing a lot. So I want to be just, you know, sometimes want to just relax my body, my, my arm. And uh, so, um, but I, I still try to practice every day. Um, sometimes I take one day off. Uh, maybe two two days two days off, um, but I I just enjoy I still enjoy practicing because it's kind of a um, it's kind of a meditative. It can be you know I I'm, I'm sure some of you also find that too, and uh, it's like um sort of a time to spend by myself and sort of think about things sometimes, and um, but after practicing I've uh, you know, I feel better before I started. I after practicing, I feel better than before I started, which is a good thing, you know. <laughs> um, and um, so it's because it's both like physical, like you know, I, my my arms are stronger, my fingers are stronger, and um, I can play faster. And then um, also, it kind of helps help helps me somehow, you know, like mentally to be a little more sharp or, you know, and, and also I find that practicing is, can be very creative, you know, like problem, problem solving. Um, and uh, sometimes it's I have to do things three times just to get it right. You know, the repetition is also important. Um, you know, Sometimes we get frustrated if we don't get something right the first time, but really that you have to try it three times. Okay, um, and three is a magic number. So, um, and um, yeah, it's just a repetition is important, and and then there's also the the problem solving, and then uh, also trying to do something in a different way than before. Um, I wouldn't try to do something the same, uh, you know, it could be a different fingering. Sometimes in the performance recently, I'm like, oh, maybe I can do a different fingering for this, you know, why not? Just to, just to, you know, keep it interesting. Thank you so much. Um, Paul from YouTube asks, uh, what's your warm up routine before you practice your repertoire when at home? Or when are you, when you are at the concert hall preparing for the event, how does your warm up routine change? Um, actually, my warm up routine uh, don't change very much. I I do start with uh, scales most of the time, and and so I I start with um, scales slowly, right. <laughs> that 
And then also some, sometimes with the bow also, I need to warm up the bow. Play like a long note. Just, to, you know, for bow change, also for the bow change. Um, I find that very helpful also before I get to a rehearsal and I'm, I'm, I'm more warmed up, you know, both hands. Um, and the first finger scales like this. Like that is, is also very helpful. Um, and do, do a little bit of a tremolo like this. That kind of goes through the whole, the whole fingerboard. Like this, right? Um, and um, some shifting. Like the Fuliard method book. This is from the Fuliard method book. Oh, no, no, sorry. Um, daily exercise, daily exercise. Just for shifting, just for the left hand shifting. Um, so I would practice the scale with vibrato because that all also warms up the vibrato. Play some double stops. Um, like that, you know. Um, and um, so before a concert, I would probably try to play something slowly, right? You want to sort of focus for the concert and not to tire, tire yourself out. Just uh, play something very slowly, go over something slowly. Slow practice is very important. Um, I feel like if I practice something slow, then I can play even faster than I was going to play. You know? um, so yeah, I would do, I, I recommend slow practicing. Um, a lot. Um, All right. Um, yeah. We have a, another question from Elton from YouTube. Um, he says, thank you so much for speaking with us. Do you have any perspectives on how to listen to and enjoy music? Yeah. Um, uh, well, I mean, you want to, you want to like choose what kind of music you listen to. You know, it can be different kinds, classical, you know, pop or jazz or different kinds of music. And um, so um, I, um, I say I used to listen to a lot more music, uh, you know, because when I was learning how to play instrument, I l listened to a lot of music, uh, recordings, different cellists, uh, chamber music, symphonies. Um, it's just the, it's, you know, it, it, you, I also like to have music in the background. If I'm doing something, it's nice to have music, uh, especially classical music, because it somehow it can help me to focus if I'm doing something like writing, homework, or, uh, you know, doing something uh, at, that it helps me to sort of be more focused classical music. I, lo I love enjoying listening to Chopin uh, piano uh, music, Ch uh, Chopin and Nocturne and um, Preludes and you know, something like that. Because he's like, he's it's just such beautiful music. All right. Um, I think that marks the end of questions. If you can give any closing remarks, uh, that would be great. And I will let you know once the live broadcast has been concluded. Yes. Um, thank you for having me uh, uh, to be on uh, Cello Chat today. Um, I hope everybody enjoys practicing, playing the cello. And, um, and um, because, um, you know, I can't imagine my life without music. Um, it has just enriched my life so much and um, uh, just given me so much um, happiness.